All right, guys, I've got three o'clock. Good to see so many names of scholars and families checking in today. Uh, we are giving scholars permission to stop online learning for just a couple minutes. If they want to watch this video live, they're more than welcome to. Uh, as you guys know, every Monday we try to provide some updates to our parents uh, via email and phone call. We've been making some videos and trying to post some things. Uh, today we thought we'd try to go live uh, for two reasons. One, to give you the regular updates that normally come out on Monday, but then also to try to answer any questions that you guys might have specifically to online learning. I realize there might be many other questions, things that I do not know the answer to, things like when are kids coming back to school, those are things that I don't have the answer to, but I will try to answer as many questions as I can. Uh, so I've got a couple of my trusted staff members in the building with me today. They're going to help me to monitor the feed, and uh, after I give a few announcements and updates, we're going to try to answer some questions, okay? So once again, uh, it's good to see everybody's name uh, in emojis on the screen and in the feed today. And we miss our kids. We miss them badly. So we hope that soon we can return to school and we can have an opportunity to see our scholars again. So let's start with just some general updates as it relates to online learning. Uh, this is week four. And so all of our scholars should be checking into their Canvas classes each week. Uh, teachers and our leadership team got together and established the expectation that all of our teachers would provide three lessons per course per week for scholars. We were trying to balance the amount of workload uh, that some of our scholars would be experiencing and also give scholars enough uh, lessons and engagement opportunities uh, so that they can continue learning. Because our goal is to minimize learning loss. We know that while school is closed, there's certainly going to be some uh, expected loss of learning opportunity, but our goal is to minimize that uh, by making sure of a couple things. One, we want to be sure that every single scholar has access to online learning. So if your young person currently does not have access to online learning, please call the school. We will get a device available and we will get it into your scholar's hands. So we want to be sure that everybody has an opportunity to access the learning opportunities that our teachers are putting out there. Also, we're asking our scholars to be sure that they check in to every single class each week and not just look at the announcements, but actually go into the modules. Look at the lessons that teachers are providing. A lot of times with PowerPoints and things like that, there's audio clips where the teacher is narrating. And so we want our scholars not to just simply click through those presentations, but to actually engage in the learning. So we're asking our teachers to try to make it as engaging as possible. And we're asking our scholars to be disciplined as they check into their online classes. Um, every Monday, I'm also posting a leadership lesson. I miss rally. That's one of my favorite times of the school day. And we haven't held rally in over five weeks. Um, so every Monday, I'm posting a leadership lesson in the Scholars 2020 Canvas page. So every single scholar is enrolled in that particular course. And uh, also try to send you some information via the weekly email. But this week's leadership lesson is called, uh, Let's Get Fired Up. And uh, man, I'm energetic and I'm enthusiastic and I would love to see young people back in the building. Uh, but even during this time, we could be growing as scholars and as leaders. So please encourage your scholar uh, to be sure they're checking that Canvas course as well. And they're participating in the leadership lesson for the week. Okay, so I want to provide you some grading updates. Guilford County Schools released some grading guidance last week, and you've probably seen some information about that being shared. Uh, the media's covered it, and it's been on various websites. Um, we want to be sure that all of our parents and our scholars understand what we're doing with grading. So we changed the date for the third quarter. We actually had a couple of days left in the third quarter prior to school closure, but the last day that we were in school was Friday, March the 13th. And so that has become the end of the third quarter. And what we asked our teachers to do is to go back and just finalize grades uh, for the third quarter, taking into consideration all of the challenges that may have come with school closing and students not having an opportunity maybe to turn something in. Uh, we just tried to extend some grace there and just make sure that all of our teachers um, did what was best for kids. So third quarter grades have been finalized. We're waiting from Guilford County Schools for the word on if we're going to mail report cards or if those things can just be checked online via your power school access. Uh, but the third quarter has ended and now we have moved into the fourth quarter. So again, this is week four of online learning and we are asking our teachers to provide first lessons, but then secondly, assignments to be sure that scholars can continue learning, all right? So that's the, that's the goal of this. We're looking to make sure that everybody has access, that scholars are engaged, and that learning loss is minimized. So during the fourth quarter, teachers are gonna be given feedback on various assignments that they have posted, and they're gonna be marking assignments as either complete 
or incomplete, as in missing. And we're going to work with our scholars to try to get as many of those assignments completed and submitted. And we are going to use across the district a pass-fail model for fourth quarter. So if your scholar is participating, if they're checking into classes, if they're completing assignments, then they will be passing for the fourth quarter for that particular course. I know there's some courses that certainly require um, successful completion, like Math 1, for example, in order to move on to the next course, and we will take care of all those things. We are just asking our scholars to continue working. I know that online learning has some challenges. We are well aware of that. I know you may be working on a device that's working really well, and then all of a sudden it crashes. I get that. So if you experience any of those issues, just communicate with us. Have your scholars reach out directly to their teacher. You can call the main office line. We're answering those calls and getting them routed to the correct people. So I just want to encourage you to keep working, guys. Be sure you're completing your online learning opportunities to the best of your ability, and we will take care of grades, all right? Our goal right now is to make sure, first of all, you're safe, but secondly, you have opportunities to learn. Okay, a couple other just quick announcements, and then I'm going to take some questions that might be coming in the feed. Um, I'm challenging our scholars this week uh, by reintroducing our Scholar Dollar campaign. Teachers are going to be issuing Scholar Dollars to students that are participating in online classes and submitting quality work. So those points are going to go directly to our scholars and directly to those houses, and I look forward to revealing a house winner every Monday. Mr. Will and I are going to do that. We're excited about waving that flag. I'm thinking Dynamis House has a pretty good shot. I'm thinking this is going to be our, what's that? No. Uh, Oh, in the house. I got some haters in the crowd. That's okay. Uh, our house winner will be revealed on Monday, and we're even going to ramp up some house challenges, okay? So be on the lookout for that. We want our scholars to continue to remain engaged, and we want to let you know that we see you. We see the work that you're putting in. I have an opportunity to review Canvas courses, teachers do, counselors, and I see the great work that so many of our young people are doing. So please continue to do that and be on the lookout for those scholar dollars being added to your account. No demerits will be taken. We're not taking points or anything. It's just an opportunity for our kids to continue earning those points that they so well deserve. Uh, two quick announcements. Uh, we're continuing to sell yearbooks through this Friday. This has been a phenomenal year. And then obviously with school closure, a very interesting year. And we, it's one that I know our young people are, are not going to want to miss out on and certainly will never forget. Uh, but we've extended our yearbook sale to this Friday. That'll be the last opportunity to purchase a yearbook. And you can do that on the K-12 payment system. There's still a link there, okay? Final announcement, if you tuned in uh, or if you were on the page a little bit earlier, we released a new promotional video today. I'm super excited about this video. Uh, the Sorensen Impact Center is based out of Utah. And they came and spent a couple days with us and produced a just a great video that highlights some of the cool things that go on at Allen J. Prep. Uh, they're going to send this to Forbes magazine. They've written an article that's going to go with it, and it's going to be broadcast all over the country. And so, so many of our scholars are being recognized in this video. So enjoy. If you haven't seen it, uh, I'm releasing it in this week's email. Ms. Nelson just posted it on Facebook prior to going live. And so please check that out. That'll give you a little bit of uh, what, I, what I think you're probably missing at Allen J. Prep right now is the uh, the positivity, the energy, the just the great culture that we have here, and that'll give you just a little bit of taste of it and make you feel maybe a little bit better about having to work from home. Okay, so I'm going to try and take some questions. We've had some staff members kind of monitoring the feed, and so I'm going to see what questions are out there and see if I can address them, okay? Will there be GPAs with pass-fail criteria? Okay, so the, the question is GPA. So um, this really impacts high school kids, but certainly middle school kids as well. Uh, there will not be any negative impact to GPAs. So with the pass-fail, if we do not get back into school, um, the pass-fail will just be for that quarter. And so the GPA will basically be calculated based on the work that was done prior to going to online learning and to uh, the pass-fail um, model. So uh, what, your, what your scholars have been doing, the work they've been completing, all of that is uh, stored. Uh, grade three, or excuse me, quarter three has been finalized. And so GPAs will not be negatively impacted. How will scholars register for next year's courses? Okay, so we do online registration for our scholars, and they'll have an opportunity to select the courses that they are interested in. Not sure if you heard that question. It was how will scholars register for next year's courses. Our teachers also help by making recommendations for where scholars should be in the upcoming courses as well. If you are an incoming fifth grader, man, we are excited to welcome you to Allen J. Prep. We've got some cool things in store, but we will hold an event where those scholars get to participate in course registration. Uh, all of our other rising uh, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade scholars have already had an opportunity to do online registration. And of course, our eighth graders have been participating in that as well with Counselor Barham. A fifth grade parent wants to know if we'll do graduation.
fifth grade parent is asking about graduation. I know that most of our fifth graders at traditional elementary schools have, been, but we have a phenomenal end of year celebration that we do every year. And our fifth graders are certainly included in that. Uh, we have been working on plans that if we are unable to hold that gathering physically, then we are going to do it virtually. And we got a team already working on that. We do not miss out on celebrations at Allen J. Prep. So uh, I know a lot of our eighth graders are probably thinking the very same thing about like their eighth grade dance and their eighth grade end of year events. We are working on that. We hear you and we got some great plans. Um, obviously, we'd like to be back in school. We'd like to hold those things physically. But if not, we're working on some contingency plans. So I hope that helps. So if schools are closed physically for the rest of the year, will we continue online learning through the extended year calendar? Okay, so the question has to do with our extended year calendar and online learning if schools remain closed. So we are currently scheduled to go to school until June 19th as part of our um, extended year calendar. So my expectation would be that if schools do not reopen, that we would continue with online learning just like we would traditional learning up until a point where it's time to put a bow on the school year. And so you guys know that we typically go uh, until about three or so days prior to the last day of school. And then we have those end of year activities and celebrations and events. We're still gonna find a way to hold those things, but we would still hold in session until June the 19th, unless we're given other direction by our board or superintendent. How will scholars receive credit for math one or high school Spanish courses? Yeah, those are good questions. So when you're thinking about our eighth grade kids, a lot of them are taking high school level courses. And we've been given guidance just as the high school principals were that if our scholars have been participating in quarters one, two, and three, if they are in good standing in math one or in Spanish one or any other high school course up until the end of quarter three, and they participate in quarter four and receive a pass in quarter four, then they will get credit for that class. And they need that credit. One, when you take a um, high school course in middle school, it actually is a credit that counts towards your graduation, uh, but also, also it's a prerequisite for the next level. So Spanish one, you have to complete it in order to be able to enroll in Spanish two. So as long as our students are participating, as long as they are putting in effort and they are in good standing up until the end of quarter three, they will receive credit for that course. Is there a plan for earning pins and jackets during the third and fourth quarter? Yeah, that's a great question. So in case you couldn't hear that question, Ms. Nelson was reading it from the feed. It's about pins and jackets, blazers, that kind of thing. Is there an opportunity to do that? So we are working on that. We are aware um, that a lot of scholars have put in a lot of really good work in the third quarter and deserve to be recognized. And many are gonna continue. We expect all of them will continue into the fourth quarter. Uh, physically passing out blazers is not a possibility right now. So we are working on some other plans where we might be able to acknowledge the great work of scholars in lieu of school closure. But that is a good question. Okay, what about the students who have earned straight A's for all four years? Will they still be recognized this year? Okay, so the question has to do with uh, recognition at the end of the year for students that have earned all A's. So we, at the end of every year, uh, we keep a account of those scholars who have been on honor roll or been on all A's and uh, every year at the eighth grade celebration we recognize those scholars and we will continue to do that so uh, obviously a pass fail in the fourth quarter can't be calculated in uh, but those other grades can and so yeah we've been keeping a list of those kids I, th I think it's great that so many of them are still concerned about being on that A honor roll so the eighth graders will be recognized if they've had it fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth Yes, grade. eighth graders will be recognized for four years of honor roll, absolutely. What is the status of EOGs for this year for students? Yep, it's a good question. In case you couldn't hear it, there's a parent asking about the, um, the status of all of our end of year testing. Uh, so North Carolina has issued guidance from Department of Public Instruction that there will not be any end of grade or end of course testing. Um, the high schools are having to deal with a couple other like AP and uh, IB programs, but none of those affect us. So we are not moving forward with any end of year testing. So scholars will not take a reading uh, or a math EOG and our eighth graders and our fifth graders will not take a science EOG. Um, could you reiterate that we are planning to do something for eighth grade celebration? I got you eighth grade. There was a question about eighth grade celebration. So. Um, We've had a team, man, I've, I've never been in so many meetings, but we've had a team working uh, for about two weeks on how to replace some of our physical 
activities with virtual activities or opportunities. And you know, we're not the only ones. Think about high school seniors. They're having to figure out how to provide a graduation opportunity uh, for young people to walk and be recognized for all their many years of work. And it's the same for our eighth graders. Uh, we really hope we're back in school, but if for any reason school remains closed, we will hold multiple events for our eighth graders because you think about all the things that we typically do and the things you were looking forward to. Uh, I can't make up for that New York trip. That was obviously going to be a big thing. Uh, but you think about like the eighth grade dance, there's an eighth grade luncheon, there's an eighth grade awards assembly and celebration. We got you eighth grade. We are working on that. So um, we, we, we definitely care about our eighth grade scholars and look forward to celebrating them. What about pins for third quarter? Will kids receive pins? So the question's about pins for third quarter. At this time, it doesn't look like we're going to be able to provide pins for the third quarter. A lot of circumstances went into play there. Uh, the quarter being shut, uh, shut down early, obviously school closure, stay-at-home orders. Uh, typically, I'm the only one in the building each day, along with Mr. Klein. Uh, convinced some staff to come in today and to help out, but most of our people are at home just like you guys are at home. And so at this time, it doesn't look like we have a plan, but we will make up for any recognitions that were missed as a due to, as due to school closure. Um, any updates from the county on magnet applications? The question is about magnet applications. So I'm assuming this is coming from an eighth grade parent because middle schools and elementary schools uh, did send out their um, magnet seats. And so we have already gotten some names of young people that are gonna be joining us at Allen J Prep Academy for next year. We look forward to celebrating you guys as well if by chance you're out there or know someone that is going to be coming to Allen J Prep. So if this question is from an eighth grade parent about Magnet, my understanding is that Magnet um, is going to hold their lottery or offer their seats the third week in May. And I realize that seems late. It seems very late to me as well. I uh, just can't you know, overstate the impact that this COVID-19 is having on the way that we function and all of our processes and trying to be sure that we are uh, equitable in everything that we do with those that have access and those that do not. So for those of you that are in eighth grade that applied, uh, we are being told third week of May, which is still several weeks out there. But uh, if we get any updates, we will certainly share that. How do you anticipate school will be different when we do return? Yeah, it's a big question. The question was, how do I anticipate that school will be different when we do return? I think some of those things depend on when we return. If by chance we return in May or if Governor Cooper lifts the school closure, um, school would certainly be different with regards to things such as social distancing. We probably would not be holding rally. We'd be thinking about different ways to offer classes in larger spaces. Uh, if it does not reopen and we come back in August, we're just going to have to see like what the state of our state is at that time. Um, is the virus still present? Are we still needing to practice those social distancing things? I think a lot of our procedures are going to be changed forever, not just in Allen J Prep and schools, but in society. Uh, but I'm hopeful for the best that we'll be able to get as close back to normal as we could, as we can. What about reading? Is there a recommended list for scholars to read in each grade level? Yeah, it's a good question. The question is about reading and recommended lists. So our English language arts teachers are providing lots of different recommended reading lists on their Canvas page. I know Ms. Nelson has also provided lots of different access to uh, different online uh, reading opportunities. And so I can ask our ELA teachers to be sure that they are posting, uh, reposting, or even sending it to me so I can send it directly to parents where you can access some, uh, some online reading opportunities. But we definitely want our scholars reading. I think that's one of the biggest things that we can do. And parents, if your kid comes to you and says, I've done all my online learning and it's like 1230 in the afternoon, you can say, hey, all right, well, let's read for 30 minutes. We want to be sure that our young people are reading. That's the best way to keep their fluency and comprehension skills sharp. Have them read to you. Have them read to a younger sibling. Just be sure that they are reading consistently. How will students turn in their blazers and tablet if school doesn't open back up for students? Yeah, so the question has to do with like returning some items to school if school does not reopen. Um, every day we schedule appointments here at the school. We have parents and scholars that come and pick up tablets just right there in the front foyer. And if we need to get some things returned, we would be scheduling some appointments as well. A lot of those things are just unknown right now. Uh, as soon as we start to see North Carolina opening back up and what that means either for schools or businesses or travel, we'll be able to make some better decisions. Uh, but we'll be sure to uh, give parents plenty of opportunity to turn things in and plenty of notice. I uh, want to be sure our scholars can turn those things in without any penalty.